this is the video where I offend a lot of people, possibly. Good thing is my specialty though. Hello everyone, my name's Nisha, and today I am doing a Colleen Hoover video where I've read four books by the lovely Colleen Hoover, and I'm going to tell you whether I like them or not. So if you don't know, Colleen Hoover kind of has this cult following on book talk. And you've probably seen many of her books just lingering around the web. I wanted to see how her writing was. I wanted to see what type of books she did. I wanted to see if book talk is lying to us because a lot of times it seems like they are. So let's just get into it. And so the first book I read by Colleen Hoover was All Your Perfects. Baby. <laughs> this was the best way to start this little journey of ours. I loved this book, actually. I know, I know. I truly have my heart set for Quinn and Graham. I just want them to have the best life possible and I would die for this man that is Graham. Okay? I'll say it. I don't care. I will say it. I would die for Graham. I would cry for Graham. Okay? If that's not love, I don't know what it is. So if you don't know, All Your Perfects is about this married couple that are going through a lot of difficult challenges within their marriage and it goes back and forth between when they first met and to now after being married for seven years um it does deal with some sensitive topics so i would definitely check on that if it's okay for you to um kind of read because they are it is kind of a hard read it is definitely a very sad book I really like sad books though, for some reason. I don't know. Um, maybe it's my obsessive need to control things, so I want to control when I'm sad and when I'm not, too. We'll, we'll do that on a different day, okay? I just, I really believe in Quinn and Graham's love in this book. It was really the first ever romance book that i've ever given five stars i usually don't like romance books because they just remind me so much of like wattpad writing <laughs> you know what i mean like and of course there's a lot of great books that i remember to this day from wattpad that were like amazing but there's a lot of wattpad books that are just like written by like a 12 year old and you know it's written by like a 12 year old and that's what a lot of romance books remind me of even if they're not from Wattpad so I usually don't like them however this book it was so just so crushing so joyful so just momentous brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular I truly love this book i read all of these books by the way online i read three of them on libby and then one of them on amazon prime reading so i read these all online um but i want to go back and buy all your perfects because i love it so much and i just want to just sticky note and highlight every single thing that man graham has ever said and i don't annotate books but this is the first book where I am convinced I would actually go back and look at my annotations because I genuinely loved this book. And that's all I have to say about that. I gave this book five stars. It was really a great book to go into firsthand for a Colleen Hoover book. So I highly recommend, definitely check the trigger warnings. It deals with a pretty sensitive topic, so definitely check on that. But I truly just adore this couple. I adore this book. Graham's letters, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have never loved a male character so much in my life. His letters. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am going to buy this book just so I can reread his letters all the time. Like, I... If you know me, which you probably don't because this is my first video. Hello. Um... I love a good love letter. I just, ooh, a good love letter, it just does it for me. And it was giving, it was giving. This book was giving. 
And that's, that's, that's all I have to say about that book because I can keep going forever. Now it's time to talk about the things that are going to offend some people. Um, after all your perfects, first I wanted to read November 9th next, but I heard that the people in Ugly Love were in November 9th, so I decided to read Ugly Love next. <sighs> boy, oh boy, here comes the offenses, guys. I kinda hated that book. I know, I hated that book. Uh, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> I gave Ugly Love two stars. I know. Um, and I, I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand why so many people loved this book. This is one of the most talked about books of Colleen Hoover next to It Ends With Us. Um, I should get It Ends With Us on Libby in like a month. Let me know if you want a video of that. Um, but ugly love just wasn't doing it for me it was very heartbreaking it was very um emotional for sure but throughout the book i cared more about what was happening in miles's past i wanted to know what was going on with miles and rachel more than i cared about what was happening with miles and tate <laughs> and the other problem is you really can't convince me that if Rachel was still single, that Miles wouldn't choose Rachel instead. I feel like Tate was Miles' second choice in all of this, and that just doesn't do it for me. And I hated the writing style of it. Oh. If you don't know what Ugly Love is about, it does have the like brother's best friend trope. It has like the boy next door trope. Um, and Miles and Tate, the main characters, the love interests and stuff, they go into this like friends with benefits, but they try to not even be friends for that matter. Um, and the only rules are don't talk about my past and don't expect a future from me. And that's what Miles's rules are. But Tate really, the she wants to know everything about this man. She is head over heels with this man for some reason. I don't know why, but she is because she's, she's met him like, She's had like three conversations with him, but she's just so head over heels for some reason. And I just, I don't get it. What this book is about, it goes back and forth between uh, Miles' past and the present. Um, and trying to see what it is that caused so much trauma with Miles. It was definitely heartbreaking. I did not cry. <laughs> Mainly because I kind of figured what happened is what happened. Not in that way. I definitely didn't think it would happen in that way that was very like dramatic and traumatizing but um the end result is what i thought was gonna happen um and then how do you recover bro how do you recover from <laughs> from from just oh my god rachel you know how do you overcome that i just don't <sighs> you know it was a lot that really, that was a lot. That book, that book was a lot and I not in a good way. <laughs> I genuinely, I just, I want Miles to get therapy, you know? And I want, R Rachel, hello? I want Kate. Who the hell is Kate? I want Tate. I want Tate to get a backbone. That's it. Miles needs therapy and Tate needs a backbone. That's the overarching meaning of this book to me, for me. I truly, I was gonna give it three stars just cause I felt like I had to, <laughs> especially with how heartbreaking the reveal of like all of Miles' trauma was coming from. I felt like I had to like it more cause like I said, I love sad books. Um, so I was gonna just give it three stars just because I felt like I had to but I finally like just digged through like some of the reviews and some and the reviews that were bad were just just going in on, on the book and so it made me feel better about giving it two stars <laughs> so ugly love two stars here's where the offenses start 
and kind of end. Well, actually, no. Because the next book after that was indeed November 9th. And so, November 9th, bro. It is no longer we don't talk about Bruno. It is we do not talk about November 9th. Because what was that? What was that? What did I read? I just, I don't know. So, um, <laughs> if you don't know about November 9th, November 9th is basically this story of Ben and Fallon and they meet on November 9th. Um, it kind of has this like fake dating trope going around, but like only like once a year type of situation. And then it also kind of has like insta love trope, but with a twist. Um, and then I don't even, I don't even know. So basically the premise is they meet on November 9th and, um, Fallon is moving, but she has such a connection with Ben that she kind of considers staying, but because of that, she decides, no, I need to go and follow my career, chase my dreams. Um, and I don't even want your number. I don't want your email. I don't want your socials. None of that because you will distract me and you will convince me to go to California or go back to California and which good for her, you know, um, basically they come up with this deal that every year on November 9th, they are going to meet up. They're not going to communicate that they're going to meet up. They're just going to meet at the same place at the same time from when they met the first time. And they're just going to catch up. The plot twist. I, I really didn't see it. I did not see it coming, guys. I did not. I did not see it coming. <laughs> that was... That was a ride, guys. That was a lot of damage. My goodness. So, it was a good book. I would recommend reading it. It was a good book, great book even, but I would give it three stars. And <laughs> I don't really know why I would give it three stars other than the fact that it doesn't deserve two and it doesn't deserve four like that's that's all i can give you guys because for some reason this book just wasn't hidden for me even though i can recognize that it was a really good book and a good plot twist and everything however i can say i feel like the ending was kind of rushed and um just not satisfying in the end so that didn't help and i feel like Colleen kind of just um because they're supposed to meet for like five years every November 9th and so we just follow them throughout each year and I feel like after like the second year Colleen kind of just had to like make up stuff like all the time to happen to push them away from each other again until we got to that like fifth year and it just got a little redundant for me. It was just like, what's she gonna pull out of her ass this time? <laughs> type of thing. And um, yeah, so there's that. Um, ben was such a sweetheart. I adored him. And then I didn't. <laughs> and then I did again. <laughs> Bro, this book is just a roller coaster and you don't know how you're gonna feel after. Like I'm still, it's been like three days and I still don't know how I feel about this book. And yeah, <laughs> I do appreciate how Ben, um, this is kind of cute. Um, I love how Ben starts reading the books um, Fallon recommends him, the romance books. And so when he sees her the next time, he's like, like okay, I gotta, I gotta act more of like an alpha male because all her books have alpha males in them and that's what women want or whatever. <laughs> and he doesn't last like five seconds doing that. And I just thought that was so adorable that he would try to do that for her. I think the book kind of overdid it with like the book pop culture references like I get I kind of enjoyed it because it wasn't too like ooh pop culture -y. it was more like book bookish references um but like I think it was overdoing it a little bit for me because I don't really like 
pop culture references in books very often. Like I said, I am a sucker for a good love letter. And even though towards the end, Ben's like letter wasn't really a love letter, it kind of was. Um, not the manuscripts, like his specific letter to her. That one was very cute. I A love letter can really just... It really just does it for me, bro. Somebody give me a love letter right now because I would probably marry you. Are my standards to the floor? No, they're actually in hell. Colleen! Colleen Hoover! When are we gonna get a Ian book? Because that's what I want. If you really want my money, I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna need a book about Ian right now. Okay, where's my debit card? Here you go. Give me the Ian book. I'm ready. I want that man. I want that man to find somebody and I want that person to be me and I am ready to self-insert and pretend I am in love with Ian and he is in love with me. So come on, make it happen, sis. I'm ready. And then the last book I read of Colleen Hoover for this little video is Regretting You. This one is actually hardly ever on TikTok. I've never seen it like promoted on TikTok at all. So this one was pretty underrated, which was good because I had no expectations of it. I actually didn't even read the synopsis. So I had no idea what this book was about um, going into it. And that made it very fun, let me tell you, because I was not prepared for half the things that happened. So if you don't know, Regretting You is a dual POV for um, a mom and a daughter. And so this book follows them too and their journeys um, after a tragedy happens and they um, don't know how to communicate. The peace is not in the house anymore. <laughs> and they kind of just have to figure out how to find their way back to each other in a sense. Um, and in the meantime, they also find their own little, like, subplot, like, romances. And, um, so this book, it was giving me very, like, Never Have I Ever from Netflix vibes, but with white people. Um, <laughs> and less funny, but the betrayals and the secrets, bro. Those were horrendously treacherous, my guy my goodness i <laughs> i was not ready especially since i didn't read the synopsis my goodness i there was a lot of tea up in this book okay it was <laughs> it was a lot but um i ended up giving Re regretting you three stars <laughs> i give it more of like a 3.5 i'm very i'm teeter-tottering off of like 3.5 to like a 4 because I can't really decide because the book overall was a really good one it really was but I absolutely hated the daughter <laughs> I could not stand her so much she was so annoying my goodness it was so annoying I could not I every time her POV would pop up I would get so annoyed I was like I just want to I just want to hear the mom I don't care I really don't care um so she really just wasn't doing it for me um which is honestly more on me because if I had read the synopsis I don't know if I would have read the book because <laughs> I absolutely hate reading about teenagers honestly because they're always bratty and annoying and just stupid i was really hating that book for a while i was gonna give it like three stars for most of it that's what i was thinking but towards the end when the mom and daughter kind of like reconcile and like so i ended up losing some of the footage but i was basically saying that towards the end i contemplated giving it four stars because i did enjoy the like pacing of the book and when the mom and daughter did end up like coming together and seeing each other's point of views and reconciling I did enjoy that part and I really liked it. I really just want like a Jonah and Morgan kind of like novella thing going on or something like I just want I want to know more about them because I really did enjoy their little romance that was going on the whole like single dad 
type of thing situation that was going on however this is kind of stupid um morgan's love interest his name was jonah and i just couldn't envision a cute jonah <laughs> i know that's very stupid but that's it was kind of frustrating because i was like this is a single dad bro like brain get it together he's a single dad he is struggling so hard you need to you need to stop it and freaking just envision all the hotness and i couldn't i couldn't do it my brain just wouldn't allow it and that's kind of rude um back to the offenses i'm sorry if your name's jonah i've also noticed that colleen hoover's men in books just always are so amazing for like a lot of it and then just in like the third act they always just gotta do something so out of pocket and it's just like bro can we stop at least with regretting you since the premise was pretty different um that didn't really happen in this third act for like the love interest to have done something so just upsetting it was more so the main characters which i thought was kind of um refreshing <laughs> and then also what's up with when i was reading ugly love i was like what's up with colleen hoover and doing like dual um what is it called like dual timelines or i don't know what the writing style is called but how she does like then and now type of narratives um because it's like that in all your perfects and in ugly love and then also what's up with her and having the love interest meet in a hallway outside of their apartment <laughs> like that was the second book and it was it was the second book i read just for this video and both of those books had that premise you know but yeah, those are my only critiques, really, about Colleen Hoover. Um, sometimes the writing style doesn't hit, and I feel like that's how it was for... I feel like that's how it was for Ugly Love for me. Um, and it's kind of November night. Um, but all these books, I would honestly recommend you to read. You don't have to buy it. I didn't buy them. I did it. I read them on Libby and Amazon Prime Reading, you know. Um, these were definitely the first books that I've read so fast and I think that's why a lot of people like Colleen Hoover is her books are very easy to read online for me the books were less than 300 pages and so regretting you I read in one sitting I've never done that before <laughs> I've always had at least like two days to read a book but for Colleen Hoover books they're pretty simple and easy to read and they still get you emotional and i think that's why a lot of people like her books and so lover hater doesn't really matter it's your decision it's up to you that's basically what this video has come to the conclusion of and yeah i will definitely be reading more of hers so yeah thank you guys for um watching my first video um comment down below what else you'd like me to read and i'll definitely look into it and um, subscribe if you want to um, I hope to do weekly videos turn on post notifications do whatever the heck or just leave you could do that too it doesn't really matter um, but yeah thanks for tuning in see you later friends and book whores <laughs>